Well, hello and welcome to <clears throat> the latest edition of the Ultimate Wellness Group Transformation Tuesday. Today we got a great um, alkaline and corona update show, update show for you. So again, thank you for coming in spending some of your Tuesday with us. And I um, think we're going to have a great show, so let's get right into it. Let's ask God to give us the ability to have an open mind to receive information and as well to apply that information for our betterment. And I personally ask for removal of my air against ego, any impediments so that I may be a clean vessel and a pure vessel for your behalf and your benefit. So let's get right into it today. The first thing that I'm going to do today is give a shout out to somebody that was definitely a mentor at a point in my life. And um, I'm sure some of you have heard the news about our brother, Layla O. Africa. If you don't know who he is, there's a couple pictures. That's uh, one of the books I started reading when I first started making my transition out of typical health. And so um, I just wanted to give a shout out to him. I'm thankful. <clears throat> I'm thankful to he, Lalo Africa, Dr. Sadie, Dr. Ali Mahana, and um, Dr. Afua. Shirley, thank you for coming in. Because all of them gave me a platform and a foundation to be able to stand on. You know, those of us who, who think we are something... You know, it doesn't take long where we can go and we can find out, Shirley X, thank you for coming in, um, who shoulders we stand on. And when it comes to this thing that I do, Lawrence, thank you for coming in. Peace, bro. When it comes to um, how I speak about health and how I have the courage to stand up against such a strong system, it is because of people like Layla O. Africa and Dr. Sabi and Dr. Ali Muhammad and Dr. Afua. These people laid the groundwork to have a way to have a voice for the people and not have a voice for the systematic and economical foundation, which most of medicine is these days. Denise and Aaliyah, thank you for coming in. So, um, got to start the show off by that, giving a shout out and a salute to Layla O. Africa. May the God we serve be pleased with him. May his family have comfort, and may they find some peace and solace in this time. So, with that being said, let's move directly into the show. Um, we're going to talk about alkaline, this alkaline thing that everybody is on, alkaline water and alkaline diet and alkaline eating and keeping my blood alkaline. That's about to be debunked because it's not truth, okay? So, let's get right into that. You guys got questions, let me know. So here's just a quick statement, right? There's a lot of stuff we can find online about this alkaline water and all this kind of things. But here's a statement so that nobody thinks that I'm just hating on anybody or hating on an idea. No, this is what comes up when you do a search on this. It says, diet, alkaline diet describes a group of loosely related diets based on a misconception. And it is a huge misconception that different types of food can have an effect on the pH balance of the body. It originated from the acid ash Hypothesis, which primarily related to osteoporosis research. Proponents of the diet believe that certain foods can affect the acidity of the body and that the change in pH can therefore be used to treat or prevent disease. So I'm not going to read any further. I'm going to stop right there, and now I'm going to show you how this can be debunked very quickly because the first thing we have to do is we have to understand this pH scale. So that's the first thing I want everybody to do is just to look at some of the specifics in this pH scale. Right here in the middle, you see it does not say alkaline. It does not say acidic. It says neutral. Now let's look at where the body lives. Uh, where is my thing? Give me just a second, y'all. So, here we go. Role of the kidneys in maintaining normal blood pH. The maintenance of blood pH within normal limits. And you see there in parentheses it says normal limits is 7.35 to 7.45 called acid-base homeostasis is a complex synergy involving three organs, the lungs, kidneys, and the brain. 
I would disagree with this because you have to include the GI system as well, as well as chemical buffers in the blood and blood cells. Uh, Genevieve Malcolm, thank you for coming in. Gerard Exposito, thank you for coming in. What would you do if you lived with someone 59 with asthma? Now referring to the coronavirus. Okay, uh, Gerald, give me a few minutes. I'm going to finish this um, alkal alkalinity thing, and then I'm going to get into that, okay, because I, I want to talk about that along with the coronavirus. Okay, so back to this pH scale. So there you live. Neutral is where the body works the best, is disease-free, is optimal. 7.35 to 7.45. So for somebody to think that your body lives well in alkalinity is just not true. Kaya Simpkins, thank you for coming in. All the way from Hawaii. Man, sure appreciate you. You made me global. <laughs> okay, so we do not live eight night. We don't live over here. We live right there. And there's a constant, a constant minute by minute, second by second evaluation of our bodies in order to make sure that we stay right here. You can't live in acidity. You can't live in alkalinity. So just based on what I just said, you can automatically, if you trust the information you're getting from me, and if you believe me, then I've already given you the foundation to know that being alkaline is not even associated with life. And <clears throat> what kind of experience or what kind of activity can I give you as an example of me having proof of this, right? Because there's one thing for us to study things. There's one thing for us to go and read a book, but then life usually either supports that or doesn't support that. There's going to be a, um, a business that I'm going to offer to you all just the information. You go do your own research and, and, and do what it is that you think is best for you and your health. But there's a person that I know of, again, like I'm, I'm going to introduce later, but he talks about science being a collage of facts, and that is true. But it's only true science. It's the truth of science is science is something that produces a result. And the way that you can prove that you get that result is doing something over and over and over and over again, okay? So when I worked in the emergency room and the ICU, we used to check people's blood. For what? Their pH. And so when I go back and I look at this, and I tell you about this 7.34 to 7.45, I'm telling you that I've seen people at 7.3, and they're damn near dead. If you have a person that goes to 7.48, 7.49, 7.5, they're damn near dead. A human being cannot live outside of this balance right here. It's a constant, consistent balance that the body is working on to keep you right every second of every day of every time you breathe and now I'm going to get into specifics I just want to say a few things look at gastric acid which every time you put something in your body you're making gastric acid that is that far down on the acidic side right look at lemon juice apple juice tomato juice milk egg you know, these things up here can all kill us if we get too much of it in our body. So it's obvious that we can't live in the alkaline, right? The blood cannot be here, and it coexists with life. But I wanted to show some of these things because there are acidic fruits, sub-acid fruits, that are completely congruent with the body, but yet they are acidic. So let's get into why. Thomas Baker, thank you for coming in. How do you maintain that balance? Excellent question, because that's exactly what we're about to get into. Right on time, Thomas Baker. Okay, so here's one system. The blood draining the pancreas has a lower pH than the blood entering the organ. The alkaline pH of pancreatic juice, you see there it says the pH of pancreatic juice is 7.5 to 7 to 8. You cannot live there. Serves two important physiological purposes. First, it dissolves and activates the pancreatic di digestive enzymes secreted by, this is stomach cells, just gastric cells in the stomach. Joe, thank you for coming in. What can we do to improve strong immune system? I'm going to get into all that. You guys got good questions. Have a little patience with me. I'm going to get to all of your questions, okay? Let's start with that first section because they're talking about the pancreas gland. So what do we have here? Stomach, there's your esophagus that you swallow your food down into your stomach. 
And then this is not a very accurate depiction because at the end of the stomach we have a circular muscle called the pylorus. That muscle is circular and it does like that. There's a muscle at the beginning of the at the end of, at, of the esophagus going into the stomach and that's a circular muscle that has the ability to do that. Okay? So, when you swallow something into your stomach, that muscle closes down. And this one down here does the same thing. Why? To keep everything in the stomach. What does the stomach do? Produce this very strong acid, but then it's just a, a, a mechanical, right? It's squeezing against the food. Whatever you put in your body, that's what the stomach does. Squeeze, squeeze. Okay, we need some more stomach acid. Secrete some more stomach acid. Okay, squeeze, squeeze. The harder the things are to digest, the longer that takes. The shorter the time that something takes to digest, the shorter that takes. I'm not going to get in that today. You all have to go back and listen to some of the other programs and to get that. I just want to make it clear what happens. Now, when your stomach is digesting food, there are many, many, many processes that are assessing what is going on. Blood, brain, stomach, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, all these different organs have some part into determining when is the food ready to come out? When is the food at the consistency that we need? When it is at the watery level? When it is at the pH? The pH in the stomach is very, very, very acidic. Like what? All the way down there. Strongest acid that we have. There may be some man-made acids that are very strong, but in nature, gastric acid is the strongest strongest acid. So when you start looking at this system, that's not what I wanted. When you start looking at this system, you're talking about something that has the ability, if you were to open up the stomach and let it just drain into the intestines, it would eat holes in you. This is a, a wooden table that I'm sitting here by. If I was to take some of my gastric acid and put it on here and keep it in one area, it would eat a hole through here before the program was done. That's how strong it is. Okay? So that acid is that strong, that far to the left. Let's go back to the, to the, um, this far to the left, right? Neutral's where we live. Going left is acidic. Going right is base. The farther you go, the stronger the substance. The farther you go, the stronger the substance. It's just an opposite ends, right? But the body's trying to stay right in the middle and live there all the time. You see where, where, where it's looking like, right? Pure water. That's where the body works the best. So all of these evaluation mechanisms determine that whatever's in here is ready to be released. The next phase is what? The duodenum, the first portion of the small intestines. It's supposed to start absorbing your nutrients as well as continue the digestion of things that may take a little longer than what it took in here or need some specialized stuff. What do I mean by that? The gallbladder is very efficient and is the most has the most efficiency in breaking down fat. The pancreas releases enzymes to help break down a lot of different things. So let's go to another little picture. I think I have another picture of the pancreas and the different aspects of it so that we know um, the different things that the pancreas will do. Can't find it. But anyway, so there are three different aspects to the pancreas, okay? If we look at this pancreas here, this far portion is usually associated with producing our insulin and things that keep us from having diabetes. The middle section is associated with making what I just finished talking about is bicarbonate. And then down here is usually your portion that does the enzymes that help reduce like things that are hard for the stomach to digest like meat and those of us who eat nuts and all that kind of stuff which is not digestible. This helps produce those enzymes to break that down. Okay, now when the stomach contents are released into this section here, you have to decrease the acidity. Why? Because the duodenum, the intestines, can't handle the same type of acidity that the stomach has. 
So this will release bicarbonate to get that pH going in which direction? The pH of bicarbonate, as we just read, is over here by 8 and 9. Based on my studies, I believe that can even go higher. It can go up to 10 to 11. So here it is. The stomach acid is here being released into your intestines, and your body automatically makes bicarbonate to do what? Bring this acid back towards neutral so that you don't tear up your stomach and eat holes in your stomach. Kalina Muhammad says it keeps looping back to thanking Dr. Africa. Oh, wow. Uh, well, some of you, uh, some of other of you, let me know if that's me or or is um, is it back to normal? Kimberly Harris, thank you for coming in. Okay, so let me go back and show this. All right, so you're diluting the acid in your intestines, and that is the purpose of one of the purposes of the pancreas. Okay, so now. You swallow your food, you digest it. It, it, the pH is being brought back close to seven right there before you even start to absorb things. Lawrence says, working good, bro. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, so, Khalila, I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but um, sometimes we know that these things can be interfered with, not by accident. So, I'm going to keep going. Uh, I pray that everything works out. Now, what are we talking about next? One mechanism the body uses to control pH involves the release of carbon dioxide from the lungs. So let's go to the lungs. I'm going to come back to the kidneys and talk about what the lung does. Oh, that's the one that I was trying to show. So here you have the endocrine portion of the pancreas, which does mostly insulin. This right here, you see the acinar cells secrete digestive enzymes. This is a part of making the bicarbonate. And then down here you have the ones that are going to help break down the food so that's what I was trying to show okay but let's go to the lungs and then I can come back so here we have your lungs and just understand that here's the big tube that you breathe through the trachea and then it starts to break down like a tree and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to this apparatus here which is what we breathe through the alveoli right and so when you literally breathe through that tube, you are doing what? Pulling oxygen into, put into the blood cells so they can travel and take it wherever it needs to go. And carbon dioxide is going out, right? So there's a depiction of what that looks like. Air in, air out. So each one of these tubes that started off real big, breathing through your mouth, and then get real small that we can't even see with our own eye, is exchanging this reality now oxygen coming in the body is a very neutral substance carbon dioxide is an acidic in, uh, environment so what happens when a person is moment to moment dealing with getting their pH correct there you see common causes of acid-based disorders so you have a respiratory acidosis and a respiratory alkalosis. I'm not going to get into a lot of this, but the reason why I wanted to use this as an example is people that have, most of us have heard of people saying, you know, I have this uh, problem where I have to breathe into a paper bag in order to get my air right. Well, if you breathe too much carbon dioxide, what does that say? Reduce CO2 elimination. If that's being held in, it causes acidosis. If you get too much carbon dioxide, oh, I don't mean to go like that. If you do too, do it too fast, if you eliminate too much, then you literally have a respiratory alkalosis, which means what? That you're holding on to too much oxygen, releasing too much CO2, and that makes the body alkalotic. But these things will kill you. This is not something that you can live in well. You see all the things that are associated with that pneumonia, liver failure, other problems. I don't want to get into a whole lot of that. I just want to maintain thinking about this acidosis thing. Probably the most common acidosis that most of us have heard is a diabetic when they go into holding on to all that sugar and all the um, byproducts of breakdown things that are not being eliminated. People who have liver problems and they get um, a lot of extra toxins in the body. You get an acidosis. These things are not coinciding with living. See that? Kidney failure. 
So when we get to these type of problems, you you are damn near dead, headed that way unless something very serious happens. Uh, Gerard, thank you. Ann Taylor, thank you for coming in. M1, how you doing, bro? I appreciate you coming in. Deborah Tab McClendon, thank you. I appreciate you coming in. Okay, so look down here at alkalosis. If you take too many diuretics, vomiting. So these type of things will cause what? They will cause the body to not stay in that neutral phase. So all these things that you hear and all these things that you read about, uh, let's get the body in alkaline. There is no truth to that. All right, last system. Let's get into the the kidneys and how they are part of that. And then we will move on. Okay, so again, without getting into real deep science, this is what a kidney looks like when we open it up. But when you get microscopic, this is the system of the kidney. This is the system of the kidney that maintains the nutrients staying in the body, the nutrients that we need to release out into the toilet. And then the pH is also regulated in the same system. So let's look at this a little more intricately. Again, this is, this is another example of how you're going from the kidney to what we call a nephron down to the intricacies of that. Uh, Monica Stewart, thank you for coming in. Okay, so in this system, uh, where you see red is where blood is coming in, where you see blue is where blood is going back out. All right, and this whole system is what I just finished saying. It's to make sure that we hold on to things that the body needs and release things into the collecting duct, which is eventually going to come out in the urine. This is where all of our things in the blood that need to be regulated is happening. This is where the pH is adjusted. If you need to hold on to some things to make the pH, pH go a little more alkaline because it's acidic, this is where one of those places where it happened. I talked about the GI system. I talked about the lung and in the, in the um, kidney. So this is where this is happening, moment by moment, second by second, minute by minute. There is no such thing as living here because the body is constantly in those three organs keeping you right here. Your pH does not go outside of 7.35 to 7.45. That is the neutral phase where we want to live. That's where you have optimal healing. That's where you, your body is working at its best capability. Now, a little further discussion is that when you start talking about an acidic diet, we're mostly talking about the fact that people are eating a lot of meat and a lot of processed foods. And so when you bring that type of food into your body, there are a lot of toxins. There are a lot of things in those foods that are incongruent with the body. So what does that do? It makes the body have to work hard to keep you here. Today, in order to make sure that I still have no concern about the coronavirus, I ate two apples. And now you see my oranges. An apple is considered a subacid fruit. That's right there. And orange would be over here. Two very acidic foods, but it's very congruent with the body, very easy to digest. My body can bring that back over here very quickly. Why? It doesn't take a lot of gastric acid to break these type of foods down. But when you're eating meat, you need a whole lot of gastric acid. You're eating junk food and processed food and all this garbage that the body doesn't know what to do it has to work hard to make its acid to break it down meaning that your body has to do a lot of work to bring this back down to neutral but please don't get confused that drinking alkaline water and you're down here at 10 11 or 12 that means your body has to do what hold on to acid to bring the alkalinity back down to where you live you don't live over here i hope i'm making sense Alexander Tyrone, thank you. Uh, appreciate you coming in. Peace, my brother. Lourdes Velasquez, thank you for coming in. Danny, appreciate you, bro. So I hope I'm making sense. You all let me know if I'm if I'm making sense. And I'm going to go back and show a little something um, about these three systems. So there we are. Acidosis refers to an excess of acid in the blood that causes the pH to fall below 7.35. And alkalosis refers to excess base in the blood that causes the pH to rise above 7.45. The lungs and kidneys are the major organs involved in regulating blood pH. 
So again, uh, thank you, Denise. Uh, she said it makes perfect sense. So um, I don't think I really need to do a whole lot more when it comes to that. I just want to show this real quick. So again, when your body fluids contain too much acid, this is known as acidosis. Alkalosis is a condition in which the body fluids have excess base, alkali. Okay? The balance between acids and bases is called pH balance, and having too much or too little base or acid can cause pH imbalance. pH imbalance is inconsistent with living correctly. Hope this is making sense to everybody, okay? In order to maintain good health, you have to maintain your pH in the range of 7.35 to 7.45. So these people here telling you that certain foods can make your body alkaline and drinking alkaline water and you want to eat alkaline foods, information on very misunderstood um, aspects. These people that say these type of things have heard other people say them. And they don't know how to describe it. They don't know how to explain it. I hope that I just did a good job of bringing it to a place where everybody can understand it well. Now, I'm going to make this statement because I'm sure there are going to be some people that, um, as typically do, come back and make statements or they make statements while I'm on the program. Carl Brown, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Ann. Um, I, I, I mean absolutely no disrespect towards Dr. Sabi when I say this, which a lot of people take it as I do, there is a reality to how the body works. And those of us as scientists, we challenge each other. So as some of you have heard me say before, I was on a, a plane ride with Dr. Sabi, four hours we talked. And during that conversation, I told him, I said, look, man, you know, where, where you disagree with how to eat to live is where I disagree with you. And I also told him that that we had to at some point have a private meeting where we could talk about this subject that I'm dealing with today because the things that he said again this is a man's shoulders who I stand on this is a man who was a mentor this is a man who showed me how and gave me a blueprint on how to stand up against this system that typically takes people out very quickly intimidates most people not to even stand up against it so I owe that man I love that man I respect that man but it doesn't mean that we didn't have disagreements we don't have to be disagreeable, but we agreed that we were going to come to the public and talk about this very subject. So, you know, it's not it's not um, rare for scientists to do that when we respect each other. We don't respect each other and kiss each other behind. We challenge each other. Hey, man, where you get that information from? How can you explain that to me? So it's almost. Um, well, it's not almost it is impossible for me to disrespect him. I have much respect for him, but this is the reality of how the body works. And when people talk outside of this system, it's because they don't know enough about this system. Danny says, what is the deal with the alkaline water? Yeah, so um, I just went over that, but that's a good question. I'm going to do that again real quickly. Alkaline water is usually 9, 10, or 11, sometimes even higher. But anytime you're anywhere over here, you're putting base or alkali materials in the body. The body's trying to get back to 7. So if you take something in your body that's at 10, and your body is saying, I need to get it back to seven, it has to hold on to something over here in order to bring it back to seven. When you're over here, it takes acid to bring the alkali back towards neutral. When you're over here, it takes alkali to bring acid back to neutral. But this is where you're trying to live at all times. Hope that's making sense. So alkaline water is not good for you. Alkaline water produces an, at a relative acidity. What is the most common way that the body deals with alkaline issues and brings it back to neutral? The acidity is waste products, lactic acid, carbon dioxide. These are things that the body's trying to get rid of. But it now has to hold on to it because you're putting alkaline water in it. And while I'm on that subject, there is no such thing as an alkaline food. There are foods that decrease the body's work but everything you eat is going to be mixed with gastric acid. There's nothing that you can put in your mouth, chew, swallow, that the gastric acid is not going to intertwine itself with in order to get it to the place where you can absorb it correctly. So everything that you eat is going to have to be made acidic in the stomach, and then the body starts to correct it. So let's get away from all that idea of alkaline foods and all this kind of stuff. You really have to make sure that you eat foods that are the that are the easiest for the body to deal with. And again, those are in my other shows, so please go check out Optimal um, 
optimal vegetarianism without supplementation. And it also did something on the science of eating. Okay. Kristen Green, thank you for coming in. You said, maybe I missed it, but how can you tell what your pH is currently? Um, well, you can't unless you, unless you go somewhere and they take your blood because for some of you who have bought these strips and you test your urine or you test your spit or you test some fluid that comes out of your body like your vaginal um, secretions, you cannot base use that as a good basis of where your body is. Your body's always going to stay right where I said it was, 7.35 to 7.45. That is the range. But when you test your spit, your body may have been reacting to something. Like today, I went outside and I worked out for two hours, right? I was tired when I got finished. So what does that mean? That I was producing some lactic acid, which is over here somewhere, and probably somewhere between the three and five range, right? So... As I was working out and after my workout, all of that lactic acid that's being uh, released out of my muscles, my body is doing what? Trying to find something inside of itself over here to balance out all of that acid. So if I had tested my spit after or during my workout, it's going to be what? More alkaline, but it's not accurate because it's, it, it is a result of something. I hope I'm making sense. And then vice versa, if you're drinking a lot of high pH water and your body's holding on to acids to try to balance that and you go test your urine or you test your saliva, it's going to be probably more acidic, which is not totally accurate. It is based on the body's response. So again, this is a minute by minute, second by second reality. Every day of every time you breathe, your lung, your kidney, and your intestines are, not intestines, your GI system is trying to maintain you in a neutral phase. Let me know if I answered your question, Kirsten Green. Maxine says, is it safe to drink lemon water daily? Uh, yeah, I mean, lemon water is not bad, but um, don't use that to replace your water. D. Kiki, thank you for coming in. Walia, Muhammad, thank you for coming. You said, yes, sir, you are doing an excellent job explaining about alkaline in the body. Oh, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Kia Simpkins, transmission loss. I uh, hope that's just a temporary thing. Let me know if you got back in. Deborah Tab McClendon, I learned so much listening to you. I'm definitely taking notes. Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate this, um, the um, accolade, and that's why I'm here. Danny, where does the Navy bean come on that pH scale? Uh, actually, excellent question. The, the, the beans, typically beans are going to be neutral because a bean doesn't activate itself until you put water on it, right? Some of you have heard of things like sprouting. You put water on your Navy bean, it starts to sprout, things start to activate, but even with that, it usually stays somewhere right in that neutral phase. Excellent question. Ann Taylor. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Danny, is it safe to say the body fluctuate through the day? Uh, yeah, it does fluctuate, but the pH doesn't. Like, like I'm saying, you know, if like when I just worked out um, earlier today, I produced acid, but my my body second for second, minute for minute during that workout was doing whatever it takes to stay right there. So yes, your body fluctuates on how much acid comes in, how much alkaline stuff comes in, but the body through the lung, the kidney, and the intest, the GI system is going to keep you right there. So there's no fluctuation of the pH, but there is a fluctuation of what the body has to deal with on a regular everyday basis. Let me know if I answered your question. Kirsten Green, you did. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so um, if you all say the same, then that means I'm finished with this situation and I want to talk about um, just some things about this coronavirus. I, I think I've told you all I was finished talking about it and I was but this thing keeps getting bigger and bigger uh, more deadly and more deadly and so the first thing that I wanted to say to everybody is I want you to understand that I in no part was trying to belittle this thing. I was no part trying to make anybody else think that this wasn't something serious. It is something serious. But to have your mind inundated on something serious, um, what you have to do is maintain your mind on what is the best thing that you can do for yourself without getting inundated with all the negative information. All right, Tina Crawley says, what about navy bean juice? I drink that every morning. Um, well, what do you mean by what about it? Are you saying um, does it affect? I mean, if you drink navy bean juice, I think that's good. I think it would be better to eat navy beans. Because when you chew the food, the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the maxillary glands are 
submaxillary glands are producing saliva to help break that down. The intestine, I mean the stomach, is breaking that down. The intestines are absorbing it. You can't beat that process. So drinking navy be bean juice, um, you would have to tell me why you do it, what, what's your um, goal, because um, I can't say that it's bad, but w what is your goal um, for that? So let me know, please. Geneva says, how does this relate to Corona? Excellent question. About to get into it. Um, Carl Brown, enjoying eating salt now. Can Just came off of fast. Salt water helps a lot. Yeah. Salt water is, is um, very important for us to get rehydrated. But um, let's get into um, a couple of things that were sent to me. So we can get a little into this coronavirus and then um, we'll end with um, what I think our mind should be. So I want everybody, if you get a chance, to check this out. And I got to give a shout out to my brother Hakeem because he always keeps me up with this, um, a lot of information. He's always sending me stuff. Keep me up. Now you see their event 201 pandemic exercise, November the 4th of 2019. This was a forum that was put together by Bill and Melinda Gates. They had Johns Hopkins and the other people, a lot of different people involved in this thing. But when you all get a chance, go back and check this out because this is what? November the 4th of 2019, which was before anything was going on about this coronavirus. And they had a whole um, conference about coronavirus and what we would have to do in order to deal with it becoming a pandemic. How does somebody predict something like that? Bill Gates has been talking about this um, global infection and, and how serious it was going to be for people for years. So where is he getting this information? And what is it that we need to do in order to understand what is going on? So I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, you all, please go read it yourself. Let me let you see the thing so you can read it yourself. Coronavirus and the Gates Foundation. Check it out. So here it is again. It's saying a global flu-like pandemic in effect is something the Gates and his well-endowed foundation have spent years preparing for. How is he preparing for something that is supposed to be in nature and we don't have the ability to, to predict? That's pretty interesting. So something for you to think about and read it if you want to. In 2007, during the Davos World Economic Forum, Gates initiated something called the CPI. Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations with Norway, India, Japan, and Germany to accelerate the development of vaccines will need to contain outbreaks of future epidemics. These people are predicting that there's an epidemic coming, uh, an epidemic coming in so-called situations that we don't have the ability to predict. Okay, I think that's pretty, um, pretty harrowing idea right there. So this video that you're talking about explain the series. Imagine a wet market in China where, hold on, let me get this visual right, where live and dead animals are stacked and a highly deadly virus erupts that spreads globally. So they were having this discussion in 2019 and this process didn't occur until the Chinese New Year, supposedly. Right. OK, so just some, something for us to think about, because we have to really start um, considering what it is that we're dealing with. Right. After the lockdown, a global coronavirus vaccination program. So let's see, here's that coalition that Bill Gates put together. Right. Note that. The development of the 2019 coronavirus vaccine was announced at the Davos World Economic Forum a week prior to the official launch, launching by the WHO of the worldwide public health emergency. They did it on January 30th. At a time when the number of confirmed cases worldwide outside of China was 150, including six in the United States. So we're talking about um, potentially some really crazy things, right? Now here's this man and I spoke on this before. You all can go check out my my um, my previous program on coronavirus. I I talked about this thing that he says it was ten times worse at that time. 
The statistics did not say that. So this man wasn't speaking based on the current statistics. He was speaking based on what he knew was going to happen. How did he know that? You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of information that makes this whole situation a lot more harrowing than it was. Now, at the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't change my worry because there are a lot of people that are still improving and coming through this. Okay? So at the end of the day, we still have to depend on what it is that we have the capability of doing. So there you see, on January 31st, the day following the WHO's official launching of the pandemic and Trump's decision to, curl a, to curtail air travel from China, this company, I mean, this group announced its partnership with this company, and that's GlaxoSmithKline. And then there's another company, uh, where, is, where is it? It may be a little further down. But these people were already working on this before this even left China because it hadn't come out of China to any significant degree at that point. But these people were already working on. So we have to be very careful. This is just some tweets and they're going back and showing you the dates of when these people were already having discussions about uh, vaccines. Okay. So why would we be talking about a vaccine so early and we don't even know a lot about the doggone um, infection? So this guy right here, the one that we saw a picture of earlier, he's part of this company called Moderna, which is another one that's going to be making vaccines. So what, what is the reason why I'm going through all this, you all? You say Event 201 is on YouTube. Yeah, that, I was going through that, so let me know if it has come off. Uh, Maxine says, you helped me with coping with the coronavirus just by focusing on eating better. Some days have been better than others, but I'm still on the right path. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ann Taylor, eat that and digest it if you can. <laughs> David Hawthorne, thank you for coming in. Funny how I haven't heard, Ann Taylor says, funny how I haven't heard anything about Germany. Right. Yeah, there, there are a lot of co countries that it seems like it hasn't caused a problem with at all. Um, but I want to talk about a few other things so that I can help you all on the perspective of how do you deal with this, okay? So let me first say, that here is an article right here that my brother Hakeem sent me again, and it's talking about Serbian President Alexander Vucic called, could not have been more explicit. The only country that can help us is China. By now, you all understood that European solidarity does not exist. That was a fairy tale over. Now, why am I mentioning that statement? Because as you all can probably already have read or, or researched, the Chinese are blaming America. America blamed China, and um, Canada's in this, and the, the so-called um, Middle East is blaming other people. It's obvious that this is a man-made thing because everybody's starting to blame each other. But here's what I wanted you all to hear. Under harsh sanctions and demonized since forever, Cuba is still able to perform breakthroughs, even on biotechnology. The antiviral Hebron, or interferon alpha-2b, a therapeutic, not a vaccine, has been used with great success in the treatment of coronavirus. A joint venture in China is producing an inhalable version, and at least 15 nations are already interested in importing the therapeutic. So this is some good news, y'all. We don't have to be worried about these things that are coming down if we learn how to take care of ourselves. And so I want you all to do me a favor and go to this site. This is somebody that I know. All right? Nature's dash v.com this supplement right here that's being um, promoted here immunotherapy supplements I have personally used and one of my HIV patients became indetectable on his HIV test because of this now he was doing a uh, program as well but this is a very in, uh, uh, strong part of that program I have a couple of people that I'm working with now with HSV, which is herpes, and I believe that they're going to be successful too. So, you know, just I'm, I'm just sharing information that if you don't trust in the food that you eat, I believe that you should. You all have heard me on many times say that you should trust in the food that grows in your area. Why? Because what happens if you can't get this supplement? What, what happens if a month from now the whole... Postal system shuts down. 
what happens to where you buy your supplements? Like there's somebody I highly respect today was on uh, a social media site talking about what he takes. He takes this supplement for that and vitamin C and burdock and yada, 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 all these things. That's wonderful. Hey, if that's, if that's what formulates your confidence, I'm not against that, but that's not my way. My way is to, is to think about what is endemic in the place that you live. What foods grow in your section, right? Because let's also remove all the myths about there being something special about taking a burdock root or taking um, any of these supplements or any of these herbs. The human body is made to kill viruses and everything else that comes in the body. So if you take a herb or you take a supplement or you take the, the even this um immune therapy that I showed you. It's not magic that happens when it goes in the body. These things fuel the right nutrients into the immune system. The immune cells are what take care of everything that needs to be taken care of in the body. So I want to just get us away from thinking that we have to have this product and we have to take this. No, you have to make sure that your body gets the right nutrition. And that's what I talk about on a regular basis. I hope this is making sense. Uh, Danny says, if you get Corona, what should you do? Well, the first thing is that some of us are probably not going to know that we're getting Corona. All right. Because I, I, there's no way that this could be happening as fast as it is, as it is happening just by person to person contact. I, I don't believe that that's possible. If you all have been paying attention, United States stopped Chinese flights from coming into um, this country long before there were a lot of cases in this country, right? And so this whole quarantine thing and all these things that we are, that we're dealing with is because they're all trying to stop the virus from coming in. So in order for all of these different countries to have it and for it to be, have gotten to so many places and grown like it has, number one, it shows that it's not normal. It's not a regular thing. There has to be some influence on, I mean, human influence. But secondly, um, it, just, it just doesn't make common sense that something would spread this quickly, not by nature. So the reason why I said that is because some people may be what they call carriers. You were exposed to somebody, your immune system may be somewhat strong enough to keep you from getting sick, but then you may be able to spread it. I mean, it's very hard to understand how that could be happening, but that's what they're saying. But if you actually have symptoms, like you have any type of cold or flu symptoms, which... All of us that have had the cold and flu, you know what those are. It's going to be very similar with Corona. Just don't go out amongst other people. I think that's the best thing that you can do. Stay by yourself. Stay in your house. And even if, you're, if your other family members aren't sick, try to stay away from them. Um, Desiree Turner says, I joined in late. Can you explain to me what the live is about? Yeah, it was about um, alkaline, alkalinity in the body and, and, and an update on, on uh, coronavirus. And tell we all feel special that you care enough, Doc. Oh, well, thank you very much. And, that, and that's why I come on here and do this, because I know there has to be some type of voice for us to be able to calm ourselves, right? We, we, uh, and, and again, I'm going to make some suggestion at the end of what we should be doing on a daily basis, because I think it's all about activity. I know one thing that I've learned and one thing that I apply in my life on a regular basis is that anytime I have a problem, I have to start thinking about, okay, what can I do for this problem? Otherwise, the stress builds, right? But if you start dealing with what you can do, it decreases your stress and decreases your worry. Maxine, now that's what I want to talk about, the interferon. Yeah, if interferon, I mean, I've had wonderful results with it, and I think it's something, again, um, am I taking um, the supplement? No, because I think my immune system is capable of taking care of me. Like I said, I ate two apples earlier. Uh, I still got to finish my oranges. I drank some milk a couple of days ago. So when I was out exercising today with that sun beaming on my skin, I was increasing my vitamin D. These are things that put your immune system at the top. All the things that I tell you all to do, that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, uh, what's the website? I'm going to put it all on the end, all right, because uh, there are going to be a few things that I'm going to post at the end of the program so that you all will have access to these things that I'm talking about. There it is right there. Um, Carl Brown, if you look at Danny Muhammad's post, he put it on there. Can I get some something for elderly 
on nature's V. Yes. Or what can we do for the elderly and children? Now, that's an excellent point because what I'm going to do with this, because I, I keep some with me, I'm going to give it to my mother because she was um, told by her doctor that, um, yeah, she listens to another doctor other than me. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> but, but it is true. Her doctor told her that she should keep herself in the house and don't go amongst people because of that carrier thing. So I'm going to give it to my mom. I, I would suggest all of you, if you have a parent or an elderly person in your family or just somebody that you know, a, a neighbor or something like that, if they're 60 or older and they have medical problems, um, check out naturesv.com and, and see what you can do to help them because just one of these um, little bottles and you, you, that person takes it every day, it will definitely boost your immune system. Tina Crawley says, I got over 100 bags of navy beans, black beans, and lentils. I always keep them in stock. Absolutely. And that, that's um, a, an excellent point that I was going to say at the end was, you know, uh, one of the things that we really have to murder in ourselves is this foolish idea that there is such thing as a breakfast food, lunch food, or dinner food. Look, we in a time, y'all, well, we have to be practical and we have to think our way through everything that we're doing, right? So if you have children, if you're an adult, the best thing as an adult is to start increasing the time in between your meals. But if you cook navy beans or you cook lentils or you cook some other type of bean for dinner, when your children wake up in the morning, why are you concerned about giving them breakfast? Who get them some more beans. Give them what you think has the best nutrition to boost their body. That's what we should be doing to hell with it with um, cereals, that's no good, and pancakes and sausage and all that kind of stuff, that's deteriorating food. Let's eat the type of foods that are going to continue to give us the ability to stay strong through this time. So thank you, Tina, for that um, response. Gerald says, but if you found out you have corona, what is the proper steps to get rid of it? You got to let your body kill it. It's just a, It's just a matter of time. So Again, everything that I've said in the coronavirus um, post and everything that I've said in my optimal vegetarianism and the science of eating, everybody, in my personal opinion, should be working on that. Okay? You should be working on what it is to boost your immune system. The coronavirus gets in your system. Some of us are going to get sick. Some of us are not. But regardless of whether you get sick or you don't, it's the immune system that's going to shed the virus from your body, kill the virus, kill the cells that have been infected with the virus, and then your body starts coming back to normal. Every single one of you that has ever had a cold or ever had a flu, by the time you start blowing your nose, by the time you start coughing, by the time you start having a fever, you are already infected. It's too late to talk about prevention at that point. At the point you get a fever and you have a runny nose and you're spitting up stuff and you're having all the body aches and all that kind of stuff, you are now in the phase of murdering it. And then when you start blowing your nose and your mucus gets thick and you're coughing up stuff out of your lungs, that's your body has already killed it and now you have to get all that stuff out of your body. So it's the same process with corona. Yes, I just went through the fact that I think corona has a lot of influence by humans. But your body is still going to react to a virus in the same way it did any other virus. Keep working on boosting your immune system every day, and your body will take care of whatever is left. All right? And, and while I'm at this, everybody, please share the show. All right? Share the show if you think this is worthy information. Denise, thank you. Uh, Gloria Miller says, you are a blessing to our family. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Winford, I thank you for coming in, my brother. Cheryl X, how can I protect myself working with patients daily? Same thing. Um, if you are working with patients in a facility, if I was you, I would get an um, N95 mask to decrease your chances of getting infected or just getting a droplet of the coronavirus in you. But every day, you should be getting some sunshine, taking some time for yourself, make sure you rest, make sure you get the right foods, right? I discussed all that in the other program, so please um, check those out. But it's a daily grind. It's a daily thing. Every day, I work hard at maintaining my my immune system. I'm not going to come on here and talk like this and then you see me bending over some trash can, vomiting or in some hospital. That's not the type of example I'm trying to set. So every day, all right, I talked about earlier, I had two apples. What's apple have? A lot of vitamin C, a lot of other good nutrients. I'm about to eat these oranges. A lot of vitamin C, a lot of other nutrients. You don't just need vitamin C. You need vitamin C, you need your micronutrients, you need vitamin D, you need calcium, you need water, you need to hydrate. 
all of this I covered before you all you got to go do some of your research okay but every day get on that plan win for Perry peace God my man yes sir thank you for coming in bro um, and Taylor says I've searched high and low for navy beans to no avail yeah they're kind of hard to find sometimes because um, sometimes they're out of season but um, stay tuned because I may have some news for you soon okay um, but keep trying and then there are some other things some people sent me some information the other day there are there also are some online places that you may be able to get some so I'm gonna share that at the end of the show you all give me a little time I'm gonna um, put everything on this show though that you can use as these um, links okay well Leah said I shared your show and invited several people thank you ma'am I appreciate it Naima says thank you so much for the true knowledge thank you ma'am Gerald says I'm worried about my mom 59 with asthma I know You've been answering the questions, but do you think I can do anything extra for her to do? Um, I, I don't know enough about her to say, bro. If she just has asthma, um, it would depend on what type of medication she's taking. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot about something. So let's get back to this. Gerald, thank you. Okay, right here you guys can see. This is what we call an inset cascade. In essence, these are all the minor things in the body that are part of our body's response. Okay, so there you see cellular damage. Cellular damage is if you get bacteria, a virus, you injure yourself, some foreign body gets into your body. Our body starts to react to that. How? Arachidonic acid, cyclooxygenase, lipooxygenase, all these big words, prostaglandins. These are all messenger molecules right like right now wherever you all are sitting if somebody came if we're all together and somebody came and started bothering you you probably start hollering hey help me that's what these messenger molecules are saying cellular damage help me and then the body starts sending what's necessary but what do you see here corticosteroid inhibition so if your mother's on steroids this whole system is shut down this is the way the body protects itself whole system shut down and everybody is taking steroids NSAID, you taking Motrin, you taking Aleve, you taking Naproxen, the, your system is shut down. If you're taking prescription uh, medications for arthritis, your system is shut down. That's what all these different things mean. Okay? So that's what I mean, Gerald. Is, I mean, maybe you need to reach out to me, bro, and let, let me take a real good look at her, and then I can give you some more in-depth information. Well, without knowing everything about what's going on with her and what her current status is, I, I'm, I'm, when I come on here, I'm really just speaking generalities. When somebody that's in a situation like your mom, you might need to reach out to me, okay? I'll give that information at the end if you need it. Jeffrey and Andrews, what are your top five things to do to boost your immune system? <coughs> Excellent question. <laughs> Excellent question, Jeffrey. Uh, number one how you think think positively I'm going to make it through this I'm gonna be all right my immune system is gonna take care of me so that means you got to stay off the news stay off the television stay off social media where they're talking about this 24 hours a day number two you have to get hydrated and I'm gonna include hydration and water drinking in the same one Go back and listen to the other programs because I went into that in depth. But hydration and drinking water are different. You have to do both. Number three, vitamin C rich foods. Number four, vitamin D rich foods. Number five, get outside, get active, get some sunshine. Those are my top five. And specifically, I go into all of that in other programs, Jeffrey. So if you, if you need more, check that out. Shaniqua, if you feel as though your immune system isn't strong, what supplements should you take? I'm asking for my mom. I don't believe in supplements, uh, sister. I believe in everything that I just finished mentioning. Um, so I, I really couldn't say supplements because <laughs> I don't use supplements, nor do I suggest supplements for um, um, people to take. In, th in this situation like we're living in, I think it would be best for us to, to do what I just suggested, those five things, and then what I'm going to mention at the end. Ann Taylor, thank you, ma'am. Desiree, thank you for the knowledge. Thank you, ma'am. Cheryl, my job provides regular masks to use for one month, no N95, yeah. But I, what I would do is find one for yourself because the regular mask that you're using at your job will not stop 
you from getting a viral infection. The little space by the nose, the space by the mouth, that's the way the virus comes in. There's no secret to how the virus, when somebody <coughs> or sneezes, you're getting respiratory droplets that are coming out of their, their mouth or their nose. And when you breathe, it's going to come right past that mask, okay? So do something to protect yourself. Alan Bowden, since I've been shopping at Kroger's, they've been carrying navy beans. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. So whoever was um, asking about the navy beans, just continue to check different stores. Um, David Tassel, my longtime friend. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you coming in. Shaniqua, yes, ma'am. Uh, Alan Bowden, what is it you're saying? I don't, I'm not sure what that says, L-I-D-L. Let me know what that says before we get up off of you, okay? So um, just quickly, I wanted to um, um, do this real quick. Because I know some of you have been listening to them talk about this ACE system that the coronavirus is attacking, right? So again, I don't really, you know, you all don't have to memorize. This is the kind of stuff that I have to memorize. But anyway, the liver produces angiotensin, angiotensinogen. Renin, which is released by the kidney, breaks that down to angiotensin 1. Now, over here, you see it says angiotensin 2 also acts directly on blood vessels, stimulating vasoconstriction, meaning that if your blood is open, your blood vessels open like that, it, it causes it to go down like that. What, what is that for? As in the blood pressure program, if you need more blood flow somewhere, it squeezes down to increase the pressure, just like putting your finger on the edge of a hose, right? So we're going in this system. And then you see it says angiotensin converting enzyme release from the lungs that actually allows you to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 acts on the adrenal gland to st re stimulate release of aldosterone, which works on the kidneys to increase the reabsorption, meaning keeping on sodium chloride, meaning salt, and water. So on the kidneys, the liver, the lungs, blood vessels, all these systems, as I tell you all all the time, there is no way that you have a problem in one organ. This body is perfect at taking care of us. There are so many systems that God has put in here to take care of us correctly. But the reason why I'm mentioning this is because they are saying that the coronavirus is specifically attacking these ACE systems in the lung. There has never been any studies and no evidence that any virus has the ability to attack something that specific. So if you all get a chance and you don't understand what I'm saying now, please go back and listen to my coronavirus program where I talked about how the viruses invade your cells. They invade a cell in general. They don't invade specific systems of our cells. So that's another proof that this is not conspiracy theory when we talk about the Bill Gates um, Foundation and all these things that they're predicting and then how these things are showing that there's some man intervention. Okay? So um, I hope that helps um, some of the stuff that's in the information. I hope this is an update that improves you all and gives you um, benefits. So Alan Bowden says, food line in Walmart. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Tina Crawley says, what about green tea? Uh, yeah, I spoke about green tea previously. I don't have a problem with green tea, but um, I think a lot of green tea has um, caffeine in it. And if you're going to drink something with caffeine, just make sure that you rehydrate yourself. L-I-D-L is the name of a grocery store. Okay, yeah, that, that maybe that's why I don't know it, because uh, you probably live in a different part of the country, Alan. Thank you. Keto James says, in D.C., do you do telehealth consultations? Absolutely. Kenya Golden, hey, you, long time. Yes, 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 appreciate you coming in. So for those of you who may need to reach out to me, the telephone number is 832-429-4576. 832-429-4576. Remember, I'm on... Facebook as the Ultimate Wellness Group, on YouTube as the Ultimate Wellness Group, and I'm on Instagram as the Ultimate Wellness Group. So please, you all, work hard for your health. In a day and time like we live in, it's going to take your concentration and effort to make sure your health is normal. And there are just a few things that I wanted to mention about what I think we can do. I think it would be wise for us all, every time you go to the grocery store, to buy some things, of course, for you to live right now, but buy some things that you can store. We should have enough food and water in our house to be able to live for a few months. We don't know what's about to happen. We know there's some states that are being shut down. My understanding is Maryland is shut down. My understanding is D.C. is shut down. I just talked to somebody in Texas today. They're shutting down Texas after midnight tonight. 
So you should have some food in your house. And then when you have that, you're not as anxious and, and worried as other people, right? I, if I were you all, I would check with your bank. And I don't mean to go ask them any questions, but pull as money, much money, pull as much money out as you can. We don't know when we're going to lose the ability to do online things. So it would be wise to have something with you, right? Um, as I said, I think every leader of their house, if it's you men or whether it's you, one of you sisters, look, how far can you walk with, with, with comfort? I'm talking about your feet not killing you. How far can you walk with 10 pounds of beans on your bed? How far can you carry one of your children if it comes down to that situation? How many of us are taking the time that we have off of work to get deeper in our spirituality? Or are we watching movies and other things that are not going to benefit us? How many of us are taking the time to buy some seeds? Right? By the time this is over, you could have four or five things growing in your backyard that can boost your immune system. That will give you comfort. I have some food in my backyard now that they've closed down the grocery stores. So there are a lot of things that we can do. I think we have to concentrate on the positive things and the things that we can do, right? There's so many of us that rely on fast food and restaurants. Get in the kitchen and start cooking. Go on YouTube, look for some, some um, recipes and do some things that are going to help benefit you by putting in the food what you need and not necessarily how other people make them, right? Um, so that was, those are the main things that I wanted to mention. Um, and lastly, I'll say this, you know, some people were asking me about what do I think about trying to get, um, coronavirus kits to test people and to see if you have coronavirus. I think that's the worst thing that you could do. Get yourself put into a database of those that have been tested, which means that they're going to come back and check to see what your results were. Oh, we saw you bought this coronavirus kit from such and such a place. What were your results? How many people live in your house? Same thing about this census that's coming up. I know to a certain degree we should be a part of a census because it, it helps them gauge information and, and get supplies and, and um, things to the right people. But when have we ever as black people have um, seen or heard of any equality when it comes to any of these things, right? Another example, doctors are concerned that black communities might not be getting access to coronavirus tests. These are black doctors. Right. This is a study that I mean, a story that they they went to black doctors to talk about the black doctors to work in the black neighborhoods. We're not going to get any equality. y'all. America has been unjust to us since we've been here. So if you're thinking that these tests and these systems that they're putting together are for you, I beg to differ. And I would say that it probably will be best for us to find people that are within our communities, in our street, across the street, your neighbors. Get to know some of those people. See how we can build some associations because we're going to have to do this in the best way possible. But leaning on a government and institutions that have notoriously been our enemies is not going to do us any good based on my research and based on my experience, okay? Um, so Desiree says, what is the best tea to drink? Uh, the best tea that I drink is the one that I or my wife makes, which has some ginger in it, some turmeric, some raw honey and some lemon, best tea that I know of. So, um, you know, you can make it to whatever way you like and the way you taste. Willie says, what about using steam to kill the coronavirus? Garbage information. You can't use any steam when you're walking around in public, walking by people. Boost your immune system. That's, that, that, that information is, is worthless in my, in my opinion. Stephen Muhammad says, thank you. Thank you, sir. Deanna Caver, thank you for this information. I'm just tuning in. What is your view on social distancing? Social distancing is absolutely important. It's true. Any virus, not just a coronavirus, any virus is spread by coughing and sneezing and talking and the respiratory droplets come out of your mouth. A respiratory droplet comes out and then however far it gets and then it starts to fall to the ground. If you're within another person's cough and they're talking or they're sneezing or whatever and it gets into you, that's how it's spread from one person to the other. So yes, we should be practicing social distancing. We should have been practicing that. That's something that I practice as a regular reality in my life because of the fact that I'm a physician. I never want to be around anybody coughing, sneezing, and acting like they look sick. you got to get away from me. I'm either going to get away from you or I'm going to get you away from me. So, yes, yeah, social distancing is very important. Danny Muhammad says get a bike for sure. Good exercise, not all the, the jarring of running. 
walking is excellent as well. Terrell Mosley says things close at eight or nine here in Vegas. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, during the day, do the things that that are that are necessary to build your confidence. Right. Everybody should. Everybody that's listening should be getting some seeds. Everybody that's listening should have a plan every time you go to the store to buy something for your family today or tomorrow or the next day to find something in the store that can last for a few months. Okay? Keep working on it, everybody. Gloria Miller, Las Vegas is shut down. Yes, ma'am. Kay Darling, thank you for sharing. Yes, ma'am. Maxine, thank you. Roderick, Dallas County shelter in place effective last night. Tarrant County goes into effect tonight. That's right. And, um, you know, we got to be very careful because some of these shelters... Some of these things are being that are being set up by these government entities. You you really have to wonder what is it for, why is it happening, and whether or not that's best for you. Okay, Manatee Smith, great information. Thanks for sharing. Yes, sir. April Muhammad, thanks for coming in. Cheryl, thank you, ma'am. Maxine. Okay, everybody. So that's it. I appreciate you all for coming in. I thank you for spending a little time. Work hard on your health. It's the only way that you're going to get good health. You all until the next time because. I'm going to continue doing the things that keep me in a spirit of calm and peace. And that is what I have to do every day in order to stay healthy today, but also plan for my future. So until next time, you all take care. And remember, check a little later for these, um, these, uh, these um, sites that I put on there for you all to do your information. All right? All right. Talk to you all later. Take care of yourself. Peace.